If you want to learn how to make a washer set just like this one, then stick around and I'll show you how to do it. So washers is a really great game to play uh, in your lawn, uh, on the beach. Um, we play it on the beach a lot. Um, we're close to the Jersey Shore here, so we, for years we played on the beach. Um, but today what I'm doing is I'm building another set. Um, this is actually a set that I built last week. Um, so now I got it down pat. Uh, we had an older set that's been falling apart um, and it's probably 10 plus years old. And so I'm finally getting around to fixing them. This set's actually for my sister and now I'm going to make a set for myself. Um, washers, very easy game to play. Uh, each person gets three washers. I have three blue here and three pink. Each person starts at one end of the game, uh, one end of the box at the other end and then throws each person one at a time, throws their washers down to the other box. Um, if you get it in the middle PVC here, that's three points. If you get it anywhere in the in the middle here, that's one point. And if you get a leaner, meaning if the washer leans up against the board after everyone's done throwing at the end of that round, then that's two points. If for some reason it falls into the middle of the box, then it, it's only gonna count as one. Very easy game. They are spaced out. I have a rope here, but if you wanna know, and we'll, once we get into the instructions on how to build it, they're exactly 25 feet apart from the middle of the PVC here to the other one down at the other end. Easy game. These washers are very lightweight to use um, and it's very easy to play. Uh, I, Everyone that I've played with seems to have a great time with it. So now I'm going to show you how to make a set. So the first step to make the box is to make these side pieces here. What you're going to do is, is you're going to cut four one by fours at 14 and a half inches and you're going to cut four pieces as well at 16 inches um, i'm using one by four um, pressure treated wood you don't have to um, i just wanted something that's going to last uh, a little bit longer something that's going to hold up with the sand especially at the shore um, and the weather if it gets wet um, but i you don't have to do pressure treated but if you can i recommend it So what you're gonna do next is, is you're gonna line up your boards. You have your 16 inch here, you have another 16 inch down there, and then this is your 14 inch, and they, you want them on the inside of the 16 inch uh, boards. Same on both sides. Then the next step is, is you wanna take a, a recess bit, just like this one, this is a DeWalt bit. And basically what you wanna do is you wanna create a recess uh, drill bit. You always wanna pre-drill your hole so you don't crack any wood. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna recess that in a little bit. So when you put your inch and five eighths screw in there, it's flush with the board. And that way there's nothing sticking out when you're playing or you're storing it. Um, and then these screws are an inch and five eighths. They are a deck make uh, yellow outdoor bit or, or screw I should say. Um, I've had really good luck with these deck mate uh, screws. They're inch and five eighths, they're for outdoor use. Um, so you can find these pretty much on Lowe's, Home Depot. They sell variations of, of these kind of bits. Uh, they are star bits. Usually uh, when you buy a pack of these, they come with a adapter that will fit the star bit so you don't have to buy a bit for this. Um, but that's what I'm using for this, inch and five eighths. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna do it here, you're gonna do it here, you're gonna do it down there on, on that side, and you're gonna do it on that side, and you're gonna make two boxes, and then we'll show you the next step after that. So once you have your boxes made, the next step is to do the bottom piece here. Um, basically what I'm doing for that is I'm using a half inch piece of plywood here. This is actually a pressure treated piece of plywood. Um, just note that plywood right now and wood in general is a little bit expensive. Uh, the film time of filming of this video is the summer of 2021 if anyone's watching it 
after the summer of 2021. Hopefully prices will come down for lumber. But right now this piece of plywood was about 25 bucks, which is pretty expensive uh, in my opinion for this piece here. Um, but it is pressure treated. You don't have to use pressure treated, but I, I am because I want this stuff to last a while. But it's very simple to do to measure this out. All you're doing is, is you're doing a 16 by 16 inch square. Um, I have my square here. All I did was just, just pretty simple. Measure out a 16 by inch square. I got my table saw right here that I've been working on. Um, you could use a circular saw if you want, um, but I have a table saw, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna cut this out now. So the next step, once we have our boards cut out and before we screw them onto our sides, what we wanna do is just find the middle of these boards. And the reason being is when we put our PVC in the middle, we need to figure out exactly where that middle is at. So what I'm doing is I'm using my long square here and I'm just going from edge to edge with my square and I'm just taking my pencil and running it along. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. And there you go. You have your middle here. Um, it's probably, there's probably an easier way to do it, but this is the way that I know how to do it. Um, and it's as, as perfect as I can get it. So you're gonna do the same thing to your other board and then we're gonna screw them on. So once you have your 16 by 16 inch boards cut out, you want to do two of them obviously for both the boxes. Very simple, you're just going to place it on top of your, your side pieces here. Uh, you're going to take your recessed drill bit again and you're going to take your 1 and 5 8 inch screws and you're just going to screw them down. Um, one thing I recommend is don't put a screw in the middle of, of the boards. Um, what we're going to do at the end is we're going to feed our rope through one of those sides um, and I ran into this the last time I built my first set. Um, I went directly right in that middle and I was, I was having trouble uh, screwing or drilling a bit through there because the screw was going right down in the middle. So if you can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and just space them apart evenly. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not a carpenter as you can see. Um, I'm just a DIYer, so I, I'm not I'm perfect. I'm not a, I'm not a perfectionist. Um, so please take it what you ha you can with what I'm showing you, and do your best as well at home. So now I'm gonna screw these boards down. So for the next part here, I got my chop saw back out here. I got a four inch uh, PVC here. They come in various lengths. Uh, you can get them obviously at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, I usually just get the uh, smaller uh, four foot sections because that's all I need for this. Um, and basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure out three and one fourth inches uh, height for your box. Um, I'm going off of the original box that I had. Um, the measurement of that PVC was three and one fourth inches. Uh, this is probably the most difficult part to cut. Um, uh, with a chop saw, it's not the easiest. And my table saw, it's not high enough. The blade can't come up high enough to make a clean cut uh, from top to bottom. So please be careful if you're using a chop saw or a table saw when you're cutting this. So once you have your two pieces cut out, um, if you have any imperfections and you didn't cut it exactly right, because like I said, it's a very difficult cut, um, what you can do is you can use a belt sander. I have actually a little circle sander on my attachment here. And all I'm gonna do is, is I'm just gonna sand it down a little bit just to smooth it out. So if you want to sand them down, you can. I did. Um, I just smoothed them down just a little bit. So the next step is to make a bottom base for this PVC. <clears throat> it just makes it easier for this to attach to the board. Um, this is actually one of the original PVCs here. Um, and as you can see here, basically all you're doing is you're cutting out a circle piece here. 
and you're gonna just insert that into the middle of your PVC there. This one was nice and snug as you can see. And then all you're doing is you're screwing, putting screws down in three different spots. And you're, so basically the PVC is holding in this piece here. And then once you have this bottom piece attached to your PVC here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna attach this into the middle of your board. It's just easier to do. I've seen other videos out there where people just put a dab of like silicone at the bottom or they use some kind of epoxy and they just stick that down in the middle of their board. Um, but believe me, this thing gets dinged a lot. I mean, you can see here from all the years of just the washers just from hitting it. Um, and what I like about this idea and the original idea is it's not gonna move around. It's gonna be nice and secured into that middle of that board. And because we know that sometimes epoxy and those silicones, they can, they can dry out. Um, and then all it's gonna take is one good whack with the washer from a distance and this thing's just gonna pop off and then that's the end of the game. Um, so by doing this, uh, it makes things a lot more secured. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take whatever bottom, whatever you want on the bottom, you're gonna put that on top of a scrap piece of the one by, uh, one, the half inch plywood and you're just gonna draw out a circle. You're just gonna easily just draw out a circle in the middle and then I'm gonna take my jigsaw next and I'm just gonna cut it out. So once you have your circle cut out, if you want, you can sand it down just to make sure that it's nice and smooth and it fits in your PVC. Um, again, I'm gonna come back over to the sander. If you don't have this kind of sander, it's fine. If you have a palm sander, you can sand that down with that as well. Um, this is just easier for me because I have this machine. So once you have your wood circles cut out, all you're gonna do is place at the bottom of your PVC here. I'm just using the scrap piece of wood that I used to cut them out. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna use your recessed drill bit that we used before. Um, we're gonna screw them in with the same uh, one inch and five, one and five eighths inch screws that we were using before. Um, I'm just gonna do three separate spots around it. It's just so that wood plate there at the bottom is secured to the PVC. And you're gonna do this to both of those PVC. So once you have your wood pieces screwed to the bottom of your PVC, the next step is to place these into the middle of your box. And for what I did for that is I made a template on uh, Google Docs. I'll have a, it in the video description, a Google Docs to this template of a circle. You can, if you want, you can use one of those circle tools uh, that have the pencil on them, but I've tried that and I just wasn't getting it uh, perfect for me. So what I did was I just created this in uh, PowerPoint, a four inch circle to match the width of the four inch PVC. And I just put two lines in there to make the center. So basically what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take this template now. We're gonna take our awl here with a nice point on it. We have it directly in the middle of our circle here. Then what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna put some pressure there so the all stays right directly in the middle and I'm just gonna take a Sharpie now and I'm just gonna trace the outline of the circle. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to get it to be as centered as possible. Like I said, I'm not a carpenter. I'm just a regular DIYer that likes to do things like this. So it's not going to be 100% perfect and there are always better ways to do things. So once you have your outline, you can take your template off. Now we have a pretty good idea exactly where that center of that wood box is. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take some liquid nails here. I'm gonna put it down into the center piece here and then I'm gonna spread it out evenly and then I'm gonna stick this directly on top of there and then I'll show you what to do after that. So once you have your PVC placed down on top of your liquid nails and you don't have to use liquid nails but I'm using it just to make sure that it's uh, more bonded with the, the wood on the bottom here. Once you have your PVC placed in the middle, what you wanna use is one inch wood screws. Um, you can use any thickness as you want. This is what I had on hand. These are one inch wood screws. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna screw a couple down in the middle so that the PVC 
sticks to the half inch plywood. And then on the back here, I put a couple, I put three actually here, same size one inch screws through the bottom of the board as well. And you don't have to pre-drill these. Um, I found that these just go right through it very easily. Um, and again, these, this is just a better support the PVC on your half inch plywood on the bottom. So once you get done securing your PVC to your board, the next step is optional, but I do recommend. I recommend you guys staining your boards to last longer. Um, my stain that I'm using today is called Early American by Minwax. Uh, this stain can be found at Lowe's. Um, it's a lighter brown stain. I really like this one. And then once you get done staining your boards, what I highly recommend is using a clear coat. Um, this is a matte finish. Uh, they have semi-glosses and they have gloss as well. Rust-Oleum makes it. Um, I always spray all the boards that I usually do any kind of woodwork on with this kind of clear coat, um, especially since these are going to be for outside use on the beach in your lawn. And if it's wet, um, this will protect your this will protect your wood to last a lot longer. So I do re recommend a clear coat. So the last step is to measure out the 25 feet that we need between each board. So basically, very simple, grab your measuring tape, put your one end in the middle of the PVC here, and you wanna put your next end at the uh, middle of the other PVC down there. And then basically what you wanna do is grab some uh, nice rope here. Um, it could be any thickness as you want. Um, you, they sell all different colors if you want. I just use white, I really don't care. Um, and then all you're gonna do is you're gonna drill a hole down in the middle towards the bottom of your front board and you're just going to string it along to the other side and, and drill another hole down there and then just tie them together and make them taunt as possible. Quick tip, when you do drill your hole, I do recommend you drilling your hole where the side pieces are, the screws are here and not in the back. Because for instance, if you have your screws back here and those washers are constantly hitting this back of the board, eventually what's gonna happen is these screws are gonna budge out. So what I recommend is making sure that your board has the screws on the side, and then you wanna come in your front here towards the bottom and put your hole down here. This way, when the washers hit the back of this board, these screws are on the side and you're not gonna knock out this back board. So one of the last things that you wanna do, and I recommend that you do, is put latches on these to make them easier to carry around. Um, I'll put a product link in the video description below for these latches so you guys know where to find them if you wanna order them online or if you can find them in your Lowe's or Home Depot. Basically what you wanna do is, is you have your front of your board here with your pieces of rope. You just wanna take one of your boards, you wanna flip it over, And then all you're gonna do is these latches come with two pieces. You have a top and a bottom piece, and you just wanna make sure that when you screw them on, that everything lines up properly. And then what you wanna do is, is you wanna use one of these cotter pin looking uh, devices. And then all you're gonna do is, these are separate as well, by the way, and I'll leave a product link for these as well in the video description. And all these do is just slip them on and they stay on. We're gonna bring it around. To the other side here, we're gonna flip the latch up. Then we're gonna throw the cotter pin looking, I, I don't know what these are called, but I, I think they're called cotter pins, but you just flip it, flick it through and then you let it fall. And then the last thing is what we need is a handle. And they sell these also in Home Depot and Lowe's. You just wanna make sure that you put this at the back of your board and not the front, obviously. Um, so obviously put this in the back and then now you have a nice box to be able to carry around with you. And one of the last things obviously you will need are the washers. These are two and a half inch wide washers and they are one eighth inch thick. Um, if you can't find these kind of washers in your area, they are a little bit hard to find. Um, Amazon do sell uh, washers that are already painted and made for you. So I'll leave links to those in the video description. But these ones I was able to find in my area at a metal shop. Um, what I recommend you do is always have, uh, obviously you need three, each person gets three. Um, I do recommend you having at least two extra of each color, just in case if you lose one, um, you can set them to the side so, so you have them. 
So basically what I do is I just paint them with different kind of colors that I have. Uh, this is just Rust-Oleum regular uh, uh, spray paint. And then one of the last things that I always do after I spray paint them is again, always spray them with clear coat. Um, that way the paint will stay on the metal a little bit longer. Um, the, believe me, these, the paint will chip on these, um, especially if you use these at the beach with the sand, the paint will, will chip, but it's okay. When you get home, you can always repaint them, respray paint them, and you can use them again. So that pretty much wraps up today's video. If you have any questions or comments or anything about what I did today, please comment below. I know I went through stuff a little bit quickly. Um, I try to do that just to save time on the video lengths. So if you do have any questions at all, please let me know and I will help you out. Um, like I said earlier, this game, it's a lot of fun. Um, I've been playing this game for years. Um, it's a great game for the yard, for the beach, tailgating if you can. Um, it's just a great game. It's fun. It's, it, gets, it can get com competitive. And the, one of the reasons why I like this game so much is the, the weight of the washers. They're very lightweight. So anybody can play this game. They're not like horseshoes that are heavy and hard to throw. They're very lightweight and they're easy to throw. So please, any questions, concerns, comment below and I will get back to you. If you found this video helpful today, make sure you smash that like button. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm so other people can find this video. They can find my channel. And if you're new to my channel and this is your first time watching a video, please consider subscribing to the, my channel. It's an all organic, uh, lawn care channel. I also do obviously some DIY projects as well. I use no herbicides in my lawn and that's what I strive for to be more organically better with my lawn. So please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.